Today, we are gonna take two easy to quilt all over designs, mix them together, and come up with something completely new and fun. my Minerva quilt today, which is it's all quilted and ready to be bound. And we actually pieced this quilt together in another video, so I will link that above if you are interested in making your own little scrappy fun plaid quilt. So like many scrappy quilts, this quilt was kind of difficult to quilt because there is so much going on in the pattern and the fabric that my usual style of quilting, which is basically to quilt everything to death. It doesn't really fit on a scrappy quilt like this, just because there's a lot of competition between the quilting lines and the fabric and uh, seam lines in a quilt. And so I try to balance those things and not make work for myself that I know isn't really going to show up in the finished quilt. So if I had quilted this to death and done a bunch of line work, you wouldn't even be able to see it. So why go through the trouble? So I get bored if I quilt the same thing over and over and over again. And so I decided to combine two designs that I really like to make a new combination all over design. So I settled on pebbles, which you guys have seen my struggles with pebbles in the past. I love them, but I find them difficult to quilt over a whole quilt. And to make it more fun, I threw in kind of this paisley design, which as I continued quilting it, looked a lot like tongues to me. <laughs> so if you can get over that little kind of mind issue, then it's, it's a great all over filler and it gave this quilt a lot of amazing kind of squishy texture. So just forget I said tongues and think of them as paisleys if you need to. So uh, that being said, let's jump over to the long arm and get started. All right, I've kind of worked away from the side so that we can get right into the pattern. So what I'm concentrating on is getting a nice blend of pebbles to these little kind of, they look like tongues, let's just be real, these little tongue shapes. And I'm not counting per se how many pebbles to tongues, but I'm just trying to get a couple of pebbles between each. If you need to count and you need kind of a formula, maybe five to seven pebbles and then kind of tuck a, a little tongue in there. And I do have my little cheat sheet here with my pebble sizes that I just kind of leave off to the side so that my pebbles don't start growing or shrinking. The other thing that I try to make sure of is that these tongues are going in different directions. And how I do that is I just kind of take a look at the surrounding tongues and try to point one in the other direction. There's no real science to this. An all over pattern should look like it can be held up in any direction and it will still make sense. So don't stress too much about it. Just don't make all of your tongues kind of go in, in one direction or it'll look obvious when you're done quilting. So I'm gonna quilt this for a little bit and uh, then we'll come back and chat about some tips. Okay, here's a place where I just did two tongues that are going in the same direction, they're the same shape, but I'm not gonna rip this out and I'm not gonna stress about it. I'm just gonna surround it with pebbles and I will never focus this much on this section of the quilt again. Don't overthink your all over patterns because this looks really obvious right now while I'm looking at it kind of in a vacuum with all of this unquilted area around it, but I am guessing that there are similar kind of situations going on. Oh, here's, here's two right here. These two little tongues are the same size, they're going the same direction, but now that it's surrounded by other quilting, they are not nearly as noticeable as these two that I just did. So if this happens to you, then just go with it. As long as the quilting is of good quality, like there's nothing wrong with my stitches, I'm gonna keep going. So let's fill this in with a couple pebbles and continue our design.
I want to interrupt my quilting here for just a second to talk about how to make these tongue shapes look like they're really curving around and integrated into these pebbles. What you don't want is like a raindrop shape that sticks out. And I'm just going to quilt one so you can see what I'm talking about. See how that is a very straight kind of raindrop shape and it it kind of sticks out in the quilting because it doesn't have that kind of nice curvy flow. Like these are very straight lines that contrast with all of the round shapes surrounding them. So to help your tongues kind of curve around the pebbles, what you want to do is as you're coming out of a pebble, you want to go right into a kind of tongue shape and you want to follow the edge of the pebble that you're coming out of and then circle around and come back. And that will help give a little bit of a curve to the base of your, of your tongue. <laughs> um, let me quilt a couple pebbles and then I'll show you how I come out and kind of curve around. Okay, I am finishing this pebble. As I come around to this open space, I'm gonna go right into the, the tongue, the curvy bit. And see how that, it's almost like that, those yin-yang kind of symbols where this curve, where it is kind of smushed up against the pebble here, it kind of gives it a curvier shape and helps it kind of blend into the pebbles. Whereas this one over here is definitely kind of sticking out. Now, I am not gonna rip this out. I'm just gonna quilt around it and you'll never see it again. These little mistakes like this, definitely just work around them and keep quilting. Let's talk about natural places to stop in a design like this. Now, it's difficult because there are so many round shapes that if you stop and then start again and there's like a little bobble, it's a little bit more noticeable when you're doing these very round, kind of unforgiving shapes. So I have found that the best places to stop are where, like where I am right now. These two pebbles meet right where my needle is and stopping kind of in that overlap where there is already some thread buildup gives you a little bit of leeway when you start back up. Another good place to stop would be at the base of one of these tongue shapes where you are gonna be reversing direction and coming back up for this middle accent line. The, the little pointy base of these tongues is another great place to stop. Let's also talk about scale in a design like this. Now, you can see my hand is here and I have small hands. You can see that I am quilting this fairly densely. My pebbles are you know, anywhere from an inch to two inches and these little tongues are about an inch and a half wide. This is um, a pretty dense filler, but you can play with the scale here. I did a video not too long ago about playing with variations of scale in an all over design. And it was a design kind of like this, except it was swirls and little heart shapes and changing the density of the swirls in relation to the hearts or changing them both at the same time can make an all over design look very different. So if you haven't seen that video, be sure to take a look and it will give you an idea of how you can take these two same elements and change them to give you a completely different look on your quilt. I also want to discuss how to do this on a domestic machine. You guys see me quilt on a long arm, but I started quilting on a domestic machine. And what I learned is that scale is a little bit different. I'm quilting this at a, a fairly small scale and I could replicate this scale pretty easily on a domestic machine because these elements fit quite nicely in my hands. So if this was my domestic needle, I could use my hands here and get several of these pebbles to fit within this little frame of my fingers. Finally, I just want to point out that I am using matching thread here and my thread is actually a light peach color and that is making my pebbles look a lot better than they are. I am really speeding through these pebbles and these lines are not always exactly on top of each other. But through the magic of blending thread, when you stand back a little bit, it looks like they are much better than they are. So definitely, if you are going to do a scrappy quilt with um, like a pebble all over, then take the time to find a thread that really blends across the entire surface of your quilt. And you will look like a much better quilter than either of us are. <laughs>
So there you have it. That is a combination of two of my favorite all over quilting designs kind of mashed together to make something new and fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and happy quilting. I'll be back next week with more quilting videos. So I hope you stick around and subscribe and join me on all of our fun quilting adventures. Have a great day.